I have returned. What, uh, what were we doing? <laughs> what was he doing? Okay, let me think. Uh, something about chest template, apparently. Does this? Does this end up just being? I guess this is the same question, right? When I was um... actually, here's a thought. Haven't I done this before? <laughs> Didn't we literally do the same thing? Yeah, over over in. So in API SRC, task.rs, that's where we are. Uh, previously, we were in API SRC handlers, create task input. Why? Why? <laughs> Title, URL, payload, data key. It's, it's literally the same thing. Why are we defining this twice? So I think it makes sense to, yeah, I want to import that. I think it makes sense to just to get rid of this one for the same rationale for referencing task template. Like we don't necessarily need to worry too much about, um, like the, the def like the shape of those things, uh, needing to be independently changeable. So I'm just going to destroy, create task input. It's only reference there. Um, not task. Yeah, task request. Save that. Save that. Okay, so that exists there. And we need to fix, import that. And then we have, uh, I guess we weren't using the uh, deserialize or not using task template anymore. You have two errors somewhere. Um, something to do with create handler. It's literally the thing I just changed. What's the problem? Um, oh, so. Task, create task input, and drives deserialize and debug. I'm gonna guess that potentially um, the other thing, <laughs> okay, task request uh, does not implement deserialize. Let's let's fix that. Oops. Okay. There we go. That gets rid of that error. That now means that places where we're referring to task requests, like in YouTube.rs and probably other places, are broken. <laughs> uh, in the short term, you know, we just do this, right? Uh, to do for, yeah, something like that. Errors one, okay. So on silence detection, sim similar deal. Uh, we don't really intend on having a next task, at least for now, so we'll just leave that as none without a to-do. Look, it's there, come on. Okay, there we go. Can we... Okay, nope. 
I assume because of the fact that this turned up this file, there being an error, that it is checking the whole workspace. So I guess those were the only two places where we were using this task request. Ah, yeah. Um, is that true? Only two places where we're doing something like this, which is interesting, right? Because we also have transcription that should be doing something similar, not in detect segment, but in detect. We're just doing it directly. Like we're building this directly. And this should still be fine. Like even though we're not passing in next task, the backend should still accept that. And if not, I'll fix it later, but I'm pretty sure that should be fine. Okay, so before I start changing uh, things uh, here, let's see if we can save our progress so far um, in a commit. Is it going to make sense? Let's see, first of all, can Copilot give us a nice commit? No, 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 definitely not. Um, what if I stage this? Can you give me a nice message for that? Nope. Why? Why is it doing this? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Whatever. So, summarizing all of this, many hours of work, um, I mean, we do lots of specific things, but in general, the idea is that we're adding support for um, follow on tasks in the back end. Uh, next, let's do it this way. Next task. Task chain in the back end. Something like that. All right, let me push up all of those changes. I think we also need to uh, maybe pull down dependency changes that I had did, done through Dependabot. Also, I think we can close this other PR now. We've definitely moved well beyond kind of the work we were doing in this one from uh, May 5th. Uh, for those that you know haven't been following along the whole saga, no, I have not been working on this for two months. I worked on this a little bit and then convinced myself that I didn't actually need this. And so we worked on a bunch of other things. And then I eventually realized that no, no, actually we do kind of need this. So, um, but not this form of this. This one. We still do need to have some support in the UI Right, so we have a task little uh, drawer that pops out that shows information about tasks. Um, and there we go, like that. And uh, that should also kind of show, that's why I added that field to say has next task uh, in the list view, uh, the list endpoint. So we probably wanna show, hey, this task has follow on tasks which is why I called them here. Change task, um, additional tasks, more things, I don't know. Verbiage will be something to figure out. Uh, but we do need to 
uh, handle conflicts. I think the easiest thing to do is probably going to be to go from, the, well, let's see, get pull from origin main. Okay. And the merge changes are in the front end. Um, we don't need this to be quite this wide. Let's let's narrow that down. Uh, if we just do npm install, will that sort out our merge conflicts? No. Uh, it would in package lock, I think, but we do need to do it in package uh, JSON first. So storybook, we want to keep the newer version. In general, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick the, the newer versions. Um, these are the same. Material is the same. Date pickers, uh, that's newer. Uh, that's newer, that's newer. Okay, so we're just gonna accept current change. Where's React Admin in this? There it is, four, good. Okay. So stage that, close that. Try running npm install again. my branch name so long and it's gonna make me do force can I do it at the end like this yeah why because I at some point decided that I was gonna have get pull uh, to rebase so that that was a rebase <laughs> we did uh, so that should still have all my all my changes in it see what changed here was I changed react admin from being a very well somewhat specific version to being anything for uh, which I'm pretty happy with considering that that fixed a lot of issues for it well a big issue okay um, do do I want to actually solve the YouTube thing here I think, I, I think I'm not gonna have enough time today to do that. Um, I think I'm gonna create a separate issue if there's an already one specifically for that. And then we're just gonna wrap up the, the UI work. Uh, make HTTP client configurable, save list video clips and stream. Ah, uh, so we, we fixed this, this is closed. Uh, closed the, uh, I don't suppose I still have that ticket around somewhere. Uh, let's see this one. All right. Cool. Uh, let's see. Improve error handling and record conversions. I've kind of started that, that, that on that. Um, maybe I should search. Uh, let's see. How about YouTube? Handle case where user isn't logged in. Yeah, I should do that. Make it easier to upload multiple. Yeah, eventually. Addability update, update data. Okay, so I don't have a thing for. Um, use chained tasks to um, add videos to playlist after upload. 
I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two issues. Okay, cool. Um, to YouTube. To mark uh, episodes. As published after upload. Okay. Uh, all right. So I I am getting a sense that probably at some point I will want to add like labels or something. To organize all this but uh, you know it's only it, it's less than 50 things it's fine uh, so I'll convert that to an issue uh, we'll move this to the top uh, I would prefer that it would um, leave my view at the bottom and just move the item to the top but what are you gonna do um, check out figment soon Okay, so let's wrap up this item. So what do we need to do? Well, I think really the only thing I need to do right now is have some indicator in the UI that a task will have additional follow on tasks. So that's in the task drawer. That's gonna be, I think the list component has the, that UI. While I'm here, let's uh, let's add some types. So we need to import FC. So um, don't we have uh, don't we have types for tasks? We probably don't, actually. No. So we're gonna say this is a uh, task summary. Yep, ah, so close. Yeah, like that. that and operator greater than cannot be applied to type string and number so what did we what do we mess up here all right before it was just any so it just worked um, so last few task timestamp is a number task that last updated we said was a string that's probably wrong then because it is working What's the problem here? Oh, there we go. All right, and then type task is missing the file. Oh, we have a type. Oh, look at that. Okay, so um. that fix all of all the problems okay uh, so we uh, ID should be a number okay apparently it was a number if this was working and it was working what now uh, 
Our unit type number is not assembled to parameter type string, so mark viewed. This is actually a number. Last view task timestamp. Type date is not assignable to type number. So this is a date. And this Which is it? Which is it? Okay, well let's figure that out. <laughs> okay, so we refer to this down here. Uh, this is this. This is coming from use tasks. Last view task timestamp. Last view type. Okay, it is a date. Okay, so the issue is that uh, we have some incorrect code, which is not surprising. All right. Uh, this comparison can just be new date. So this last updated is a number that represents like the epoch time. Uh, the name should probably indicate that like last updated something seconds. I don't know. Okay. So that was probably um, some kind of bug in the UI. Maybe that just worked, even though it was a type issue. Anyway. What was I doing? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we want to change the UI for tasks to say, hey, do we have follow on tasks? So uh, I think task summary needs to have another field here. Has. Um, has, uh, wait, 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 uh, has next task. It'd be cool to like have a number here, like how many tasks it has, but to do that, remaining tasks. We have to do something like task. No, we have to do some kind of recursive thing. Like I could implement that, I, not here. I'd like make a function and I would have to just like recurse down through. I think for now I'm gonna live with just having a, oh, this, this task has additional tasks, tasks. So that type is there. Does that actually capture uh, one, two, three, four, five, six? One, two, three, four, five. What's missing? Last updated status, title ID, URL. I mean, I can include the URL. So in the UI, what do we what do we, what do we want it to look like? Is a question, All right? So uh, let's see. I need to create the task first. So let's make a task. Uh, let me go into here, um, and you know, let me do a build really quick. You know, we we've not done that today. Uh, let me do Docker Compose up, and uh, make sure one that this actually all builds, and two we can actually try this out. Uh, we can queue up a task with all these changes having been applied.
Hmm. Still gonna be fast, faster than how it was. <laughs> when we had a dozen services that had to be built instead of two. Hmm, okay. So, in the meantime, uh, let me think about this. So we have... So how does the UI work? We have a box. It has a topography, tasks. It has... So we're t using Material UI right now. Although, at some point, uh, we may do something else. Uh, so we have a list. And so if there are tasks, it's just... A list of tasks. So this task component defines what that looks like. It's a, uh, a list item button with a list item icon, and a list item text. Primary is the title, if there is a title, otherwise ID, and then secondary is status, and then some details. Um, we may be at the point where this is not enough structure to really represent what we want to show. Uh, let's see. Let's look at Material UI. The React library. Let's think about components here. So like now, right now we're using a list. And we have like... Um, basics so something like this right and then we have an icon that is is based on the status of the task and then we have the text and then we have so the, the primary is like the title and the secondary is this part down here that has the status uh, as text and then some other details and we can just stuff more things in here we can do more things um, but maybe there's a more suitable component as well at this point. Not sure. Like it could be a table where we have status and the last updated and title. Could do that. It's like a dense table. Feels kind of heavyweight though for this little um, drawer though to have that kind of UI. And I don't know that we have any kind of uh, stock components here that are kind of in between that or would be more suitable. What can we do with the list in terms of can we have multiple icons? List, a list item, list item button. That's what this is. Uh, list item icon, list item avatar, list item text. What about a badge? A label for a nested list, a divider, item text, item button. Avatar with icon uh, and text. So that's interesting. Avatar with, so there's two things there, right? So we have a 
have list item, secondary action icon button, list item avatar, the folder icon, list item text. Hmm. I kind of want to actually do this anyway, just to move the action for the click to have an icon, to like a check mark icon or something for mark viewed. Just for that, let alone the counter. Um, I wonder if we could sneak a badge into the avatar. So let's, let's rearrange some things here. So we're gonna do list item here. Uh, and we're going to do list item secondary action. Is there a primary action? Uh, like so. Uh, yeah, that's cute, but not what I want to do. Uh, let's grab this. And then, yeah, we will need icon button. Um, aria label mark viewed. Okay. Visibility icon? Is that a thing? Is that a thing I want? I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. Uh, and then uh, we want the button to actually do something. So we'll do on click here. Um, selected is interesting. Probably not what I want. Um, what if... want something to indicate yeah selected I see it needs to be on the list item button which is what I had before but only list item button has that huh what about list item text oh no that's a mistake uh, let's see, let's look at the API for these things. List item icon, list item button, list item avatar, list item, list item text, all the things. Really dig in here. So this has props that uh, aren't super relevant. Of course, I could add like custom CSS to adjusting how, adjust how things look. Uh, and I might do that if I don't spot. Okay, so list item button has a selected prop. List item avatar. List, uh, list item itself has dense disabled. Disable gutters, disable padding, divider, secondary action selected. Oh, it exists, but it's deprecated. List item text. Primary, secondary. Primary topography props. Classes. I might need some custom. Uh, yeah, maybe. No, nothing like that. Uh, so, first thing I want to do is probably just take this and 
and um, say const selected equals that. What is uh, what are we actually trying to say here? Really, just new since since last view, right? We called it selected because that was the name of the the prop that list item button was taking. Uh, so if we want custom style here, right? I don't know about light green, but we'll we'll leave that for now. See how that turns uh, turns out. Uh, all right, and then visibility icon, huh? Also, what a mess. All right, and then this is needs to be updated. All right, and then what I wanted to do is going off of their example here is use was it avatar? Seems really weird. Um, but they do it, so it must be right. Uh, no, but it, it's fine. As long as uh, it, it gets what we want uh, to happen. Oops, missing two layers there. There we go. Or a layer. Um, there we go. Avatar and list item avatar. And then we need to import those things. All right, are we actually, uh, oh yeah, so we were also building. Okay, that's finished. I don't know, I don't know where I was dictating, but I stopped it. <laughs> All right, so anyway, so we, uh, we we don't see anything yet in the UI, but if I were to go over to transcript, uh, let, me, let me not do that one because that one's gonna like take forever uh, and eat CPU. So let's start to check silences. Here we go, we got an item. Ooh, uh, definitely not that color. But you can see there's the, there's the icon. Um, it's processing. We have this. There we go. Um, interesting. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, so not light green. <laughs> um, Those are interesting choices that I don't. I don't want. I, I want to use like the uh, the theme uh, things. We can do that, right? What's the theme? Maybe we can. Maybe we can do that. Maybe that works. Uh, we're not necessarily going to be able to see it. Uh, what could be cool here is that on click. Where'd that go? So currently we have it uh, mark viewed. Be cool if this is more like a toggle. Can we do that? Oh no, right? Because we're not keeping track of individual tasks. We're just we just have a uh, like a cursor, a uh, a point in time, right? So 
currently we can't. Uh, we can do something where we like, you know, actually mark everything, <laughs> like move it backwards in time. Uh, but yeah, okay, that doesn't really make sense for what I want to do here. So what I can do instead for testing this, I'll just queue up another task. What does that look like? There we go. So if I toggle this, okay, so that's a that's that's a new one, and those are the old old ones. Um, and then what I wanted to do, <laughs> getting back to the thing we're actually trying to do, you know, um, I'm gonna add a badge for Material UI, uh, and I know it's gonna import it this way, and I want to import it from the component, like that, from the, the file, which means it needs to be like that. Pretty sure. Uh, and then how do you work? Variant dot. Oh, does it need to wrap the icon? Yeah, we can maybe do that. Yeah. Um, Okay, so if it's not new since last viewed, no, I don't think we need it to be invisible. Um, I do want, how does this work? Is there like a value? I could just look at the docs. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna look at the docs. <laughs> Badge, uh, variance, variance is the thing, yeah, there. Okay, can we look at the demo? That's probably gonna be the fastest way to see actually how this is generally supposed to be used. Badge content, there we go. Uh, definitely not that, it would be task dot something task dot whatever I called it has next task all oh, right um, right because we don't have a count what am I thinking we don't have a count uh, so we'll actually I, I think I do want that invisible thing oops um, so what we can do is we can do visible is if it's invisible if we don't have a next task, and then we want to have like a title. Um, do I want this here? I don't want this here. I want this down here. Uh, also, I noticed something interesting when I was linking, linking to demos. Something about avatar and having badges with badge. Uh, styled badge, badge, overlap, circular, anchor origin, badge content. Okay. Yeah, variant dot overlap anchor origin. And then we put the avatar inside of it. Oh wait, hold on. I just realized I had cut that and then I just copied the other thing. <laughs> Wiping it off my clipboard. Let's put that back. Uh, and then get this in place. And then I want to then copy this part. Um, and then Alt equals, yeah, good. Is that not, is that, okay, that is the thing, good. All right, so what does that look like? Okay, and so, did I do something where I disable padding? Let's put the padding back, that doesn't look right without it. 
and we're gonna we're gonna change this logic to be wrong like invert it so we can see it the dot there we go um, and then on Hmm. Okay. So it's such a small thing. Uh, I'm going to leave it like this. It's kind of weird, right? Because it doesn't tell you, right, what the dot means. Uh, so that's not great. What if, can I put text underneath here? What does that look like? <laughs> um, hmm. uh, let's see. So then I want to do something like, Words are hard. Um, let's start with that. What does that look like? Uh, all right, let's invert this. Okay. Um, we need component div. Oops. Uh, I don't I don't really care for that. There anyway. Can we Can we stick a topography in here? Yeah. Oops. What's all this? That's interesting. Um, I definitely don't want... I like how it wants to, like... Okay, I don't want to display you at all. Um, I do want maybe some of this. Oops. Uh, hold on. Undo a little bit. Copy. Redo, and then put that, get rid of this, um, get rid of the BR, what does that look like? Interesting. I kind of kind of like that. We need um, let's get rid of that. What's that look like? Okay. Now we have uh, a little bit more room, more tasks. We'll start when this one finishes. Sure. Okay, now we uh, <laughs> fix the, uh, the conditions because these don't have follow one things. So there we go. All right, so that gets us to the point where this is all wired together. <laughs> We're not actually using the functionality yet. That'll be, um, I think probably next stream, but uh, I think that's really good progress. Uh, and so what does that look like? So we updated use tasks. 
to use uh, our consolidated types. Uh, we created this task summary thing here. We updated all the UI stuff here. What is this? What's Copilot generate for us? Refactor, update task components to include new features and improve UI. Add a new secondary action button to mark tests. Um, change UI with a new secondary action button to mark tests. Okay. Added a batch in here. Is there more tasks to start after the current one finishes? Updated background color, select tasks. Improve the organization and categorization of tasks. Improve the um, front end type types of tasks. That's actually more accurate. <laughs> there we go. Good enough. So stepping back a little bit, again, it's the thing I do. I have been thinking about what it would be like to get this deployed, just not like running on my machine. And the reason for that, uh, well, there's a couple. One is that uh, this is just like a Windows desktop machine that I have running Docker and all this stuff. And it would be great if uh, <laughs> I could rely on, well, separate issue. Sometimes task processing breaks if system restarts, but it'd be great if, you know, I had a server where things could process or maybe a serverless where stuff could process in the background. Um, also, you know, thinking about other things I might want to do with analyzing all of this data, uh, might be good to have more CPU or GPU resources for doing that. Um, I'm already at the point where I'm archiving all of my local recordings to S3. So maybe a workflow where that happens first and this like part of ingestion might make sense. Um, part of kind of a downside of that is at least how I'm doing things right now when I'm doing it uh, is that I am taking the, uh, the results of this and I'm combining it with local recordings in DaVinci Resolve and that means I still need to have those local recordings. I have been thinking about, I'm not using um, a lot of functionality in Resolve at this point and maybe it's worthwhile. Um, there's just a small number of things like an outro um, animation that I have at the end and some overlay stuff that could be done just with like having like um, those rendered out and then overlaid with like, probably you could do that with a FFmpeg. So like just scripting that and then not even having, I guess the downside is at least today, I'm manually reviewing the edits and eventually resolve and touching things up and I would need a way of doing that in this tool if I didn't want to, if I wanted to have this all in the cloud. Um, so I don't know, that's, that's more stuff that I would need to build, but uh, maybe we could get closer to like a really, a much more automated thing if I did that. Okay, so um, let's, Check this off. And ready for review. And we're just gonna merge it. Look at all the things we did. Squash and merge. All right, so over here, we have our commit. has all of those commit messages. Well, yeah, it has all the commit messages, right? So like the last commit was this one, refactor of the test component, and then it has the body as well. Yep. Uh, 
Um, okay, well, I won't go on a whole another uh, <laughs> tangent about rebase versus squash, but uh, something worth thinking about. All right, so uh, I think it's about time for lunch. So we're going to wrap things up here. Let's go find someone to raid. 